Hey guys, this is John. Today we'll be looking into how to set up an environment for sawtooth development. So sawtooth development uh, mainly we'll be doing uh, using uh, either binaries if you are running an Ubuntu 16 or using Docker if you are running an uh, Ubuntu or Linux based instances uh, Windows then Mac. I'm heading over to the official documentation which is sawtooth hyperledger org. Uh, this is a very detailed documentation which you can go through and uh, learn more stuff about this uh, API references and REST API references. We will be looking the, into them in the later stages. But for now, we will be uh, looking into the developer's guide. So there are uh, SDKs provided in Python and Go which is well supported. Okay, so almost every li library provided for Python and Go are uh, stable and supported by them uh, and javascript is also supported but uh, the transaction processor part is supported by the community as well as the, as well as the rest api so the better choice is to go with golang or python then javascript and rest of the languages are in uh, kind of development stage or ex experimental stage so those features you are implementing right now will not be uh, stable in the future or might get changed so it's better to go with this one so installing sawtooth can be done in three ways either using docker or a cloud instance or ubuntu 16 so i am not sure whether when they will be updating from ubuntu to ubuntu 16 to ubuntu 20 because uh, ubuntu 18 has been lts for a long time now so we'll be using docker to set up this local environment if you have experience in docker already then you can skip a minute uh, i'll explain what is docker now so docker let's say you have a machine which is lab, uh, laptop my laptop right now it has uh, google chrome running and skype intellij everything is configured and running uh, but what if you want to uh, replicate the same system in a, set up in a, some other machine which might not be using linux also so in that case uh, you can create a set of instructions to install all these tools okay and test it on your local machine whether it's replicating your machine or not and then you can give this docker file to a uh, different machine using a docker file or an image uh, through this uh, docker repository once you've given that and then they have installed docker and run the container they'll get the same configuration on the docker container up and running so here the validator validator one and validator two everything is just an uh, open to our linux instance with uh, only required components from that part inside this validator or uh, http or anything uh, there will be some um, linux features available so you'll be able to run ls uh, apt update or whatever the command based on how it how the container is configured so you these same things you will be doing if you are uh, running Ubuntu 16 using binaries. So in a simple term, all these uh, containers you are seeing in this diagram are separate Linux instances with minimal setup. To install Docker, you can use a exe file for Windows or a DMG file for Mac OS. Here, we, since we are using Linux, we can uh, complete the whole setup in a command line. So if you are running a uh, Ubuntu version, you can just simply go to the console and or the terminal and run sudo apt install docker.io. I have already installed. It's running on 19. So if I run Docker version, I'll get the Docker version details and the engine details. So I have also installed Docker Compose. I have included the link in the description so why we are using docker compose is let's say this same container topic so if there are multiple containers you can't create docker file for all of this and then complicate things over so instead you could have docker file for each of this container as alone and wrap them in a single file called docker compose dot yaml so once you orchestrated this uh, yaml file uh, you can simply use this docker compose uh, to run all the container at once in an order uh, or you can configure it like once the validator starts running run the rest api once the rest api is running run the client so it works like that so docker compose is simply executing this uh, shell script uh, in our command line so once it's 
Let's run successfully. Uh, we'll need to change the Docker Compose bin file to executable using this uh, mode, change mode to executable for this Docker Compose. Once we are done with that, we can test the Docker Compose version also. So now we are have completed a sort of development environment. So now let's now let's move on to the next part, which is to run a uh, environment over here. So the second step will be uh, creating this Docker or uh, downloading this YAML file to our local. I'm gonna save this uh, file in the same name, Docker uh, sort of default. So I'll be able to tell what or how how to use this Docker compose command round right now. So Docker compose, you should say uh, tell the file name then run up okay so you need attach sudo okay so it's conflict so i am already running that down up so since we are getting this error uh, i have already i'm already running that uh, image right now so i'm going to try this try to remove this image so I have removed this uh, existing container. Now we'll be able to run this command. All so, so we have to do this for everything now. The reason for this errors uh, where I'm not able to remove this images are I have been having this file in a different location, so it's not able to identify that this is the same file. So I have to remove everything manually. Now we have removed all the old uh, container files, so it's generating fresh copy of uh, public key, private key and everything. Okay, so our initial blocks are uh, registered and our initial transaction processor is registered over here, which is int key and xo. So int key is like a setting value for a and b. So xo is like playing a game. So if I stop this right now, and start this again it will throw an error because it's trying to recreate a file without forcing a uh, without passing a force command so we can find identify this issue by this container name over here so it's happening in sawtooth validator as well as sawtooth shell default so to edit that i'm going to use uh, visual code you can use any editor you have with you. So one is validator. So in validator we are generating key gen. So this will generate the uh, root key. So this will generate a my key. Third one is shell. So shell will create a validator key. Once we have appended the force to everyone, we'll be able to run the command any number of times this will work to run some uh, to run some commands inside docker we need to get into the docker container so i have uh, copied the docker container id from here so which is for shell copy it and sudo docker execute interactive for this Now we got into the shell part of the code, so we'll be able to run xo game. So we'll create a xo game now. Create xo create um, game one. So it's failing because it's not able to access localhost 8008. Uh, because uh, inside docker container you can't access uh, localhost or anything like that so what you can do is mention the url using the url parameter uh, so xo create um, game one url is http so we can take the name of the container from here so this is rest api so you have to mention REST API 8008.
as you can see this uh, transaction is now submitted so we can check the status up here also localhost 8008 batches so there was a second batch submitted okay this is the batch we ju submitted just, just right now so as you can see uh, it contains a lot of transactions first okay so uh, each batch so when you submit a transaction uh, in sawtooth you need to create a transaction first and then wrap it up in a batch then wrap all the batches into a batch uh, list then uh, make a encoded version of that sign it and then forward to um, your validator then it will get submitted to the network so here this is the payload we have given for this particular expo game so if I run expo list by the way you have to give uh, this hyphen URL for everything so we have a game under the current status player one has to play so this is how you access the command so we can also check int key so under we can try int key set so int key set name a value 10 it will fail pass the URL again now this is submitted let's check again refresh we got third batch in key list I don't have to keep a name because I'm listing everything so URL we can also try setting up uh, more values to the table four batches submitted to this chain and let's see the uh, final output and go to the state so now we have three values so so the first one belongs to the genesis block you can see the six zeros in, in front of that and the second one um, you can see this belongs to uh, int key because you can see the value is small and uh, the third one is be uh, belonging to the expo family so this is normally uh, this is normally encoded in uh, binary format so we'll be able to see what is in there using this command in the developer tools I'm not sure whether it's Autob or BTOA okay so the, the, this means this repressed uh, this this means it is 10 and this is a and this is 10 and this is B so we let's see what is in there in the XO so this looks readable so game one and uh, number of steps the user has taken already so there there is no player uh, record and then who will play next so that's for it today today we have set up a local a docker environment to run uh, hyperledger sawtooth in local and we have run a local instance of sawtooth and we learned how to uh, run the local instance multiple times by forcing the key to generate uh, by overwriting it and then we have saw what is state uh, how the values are being stored here in the default uh, transaction processor and uh, what is batch and what is batches uh, the endpoint so how the batches are uh, being submitted to the validator and gets added here so in the next class we'll go through the code which is being used for this expo as well as the int key uh, and we'll try to modify it and see the results by ourselves so if you have any uh, suggestions or comments on, uh, on this video please do comment so thank you guys for watching this video